So your models come out of Nomad and it's ridiculously high resolution, so too many polygons. So let's just have a look at how to decimate that model down before we do any of the fancy stuff like animation or even thinking about texturing or anything like that. So let's dive straight in and take a look at decimation. So the last Nomad video we did was about this little robot and how we just quickly built him with the hard surface tools like trim and split and uh, basically just shaping up primitives to make our model. We, we forgot the bit that I'm showing you on screen so one little bit that was quite important was just a low polygon um, track for the for the um, for to go around the wheels. So I just thought I'd add that because later on in this video you'll see that that, that was added, um, and and that was done in a different way. That was done with a cube in a, in a very low polygon way. So what comes out of Nomad for those tracks is very low polygon and would be usable uh, in animation or wherever we want to go. But the problem is that the rest of it was ridiculously high polygon count. So for the rest of the model, let's just export it out as an OBJ and take a look at it in Blender and get that decimated. So we imported with file import and we'd exported from Nomad as an OBJ. And when we've got the little robot in the scene, you should see something like this in Blender. Um, so if you haven't done any of the Blender um, basic videos, then I suggest you go and have a look at those and learn navigation first. Um, but it only takes a few minutes. So I'll just show you what happens when you get into Blender and what we're, and what we're faced with. So basically what we want to do is have a look at um, the, the poly count of, of what we're dealing with. And as we know, this is go going to be really high resolution. You can already see the numbers at the bottom right here. This may be switched on in your version, but let's let's ignore that for a minute, and we'll we'll make sure it's on um, uh, as a, as a default. Well, not as a default, but we'll, we'll switch it on and see what the um, uh, what the on screen um, statistics look like. So basically, if you look up here and you click the third button, the viewport overlays, and there's a little button called statistics. So if you keep that switched on, you'll see this here, which gives you your number of objects, vertices, edges, faces, and triangles. And as you can see, this is, is ridiculous. So we've got um, objects as 15, so that's each of these makes up 15 objects. So those wheels, for example, if I click on those, they're only one object. You can see that up here in your outliner. So they were all merged together in Nomad. So that entire, the entire collection of, of wheels is only one object. Um, you've got the body, you've got the head, you've got the, the eye parts, and they're all listed there in the outline. And we've done nothing with them. They're just named exactly as they came in from Nomad. So what we do need to see is, is how high this polygon count is. So it's already, the, the numbers are there. So you can see that it's um, 8,973 vertices. And then in terms of polygons, let's look at faces. You've got eight, nearly just short of nine million faces. So this this is ridiculously high. It's somewhere in the region of about 700 meg as an object. So it's way too high to do anything with, um, other than carry on sculpting, which we don't want to do. And this is a very mechanical object. And, and normally we wouldn't really be building this sort of thing in Nomad. We'd normally switch to something like Blender or Cinema 4D or Maya. So this isn't the way I would work for most things, but sometimes you want to do an organic build, uh, a, like a mechanical build in an organic way, and that's and that's what this is in, in, in hard surface terms. So let's have a look at what the wireframe looks like first of all. So again, go back here to this section, and if you look um, up here, you can first of all you can just change the look of the um, the color within the scene and I like to keep this one on which is called random um, and that helps me see it's very much like what you would see in ZBrush so it's very muted pastel colors and it shows each individual object so I always find that that's quite useful and then what I want to have a look at then is if I come back to the, the viewport overlays again this one 
And then down here, we want to switch on wireframe and just get ready for this because it's going to go very black. Now, why has it gone black? Well, that's because what's coming out of um, Nomad is so high polygon, it's so dense, as you can see, that it's just huge amounts of polygons. You can see how where it where it turns and where we've sliced it off, but that's way too much. So that's what we've got to get rid of. We've got to get that down to a reasonable level. Whatever we do later on, whether we change the topology and retopologize it, this is just too high to handle. So how do we solve that? So I'll just turn that off for a minute. It's a bit hard on the eyes. So what we've got to do is bring each part down um, in, in, into a reasonable polygon count. So we'll take this one first of all, which is the head. You can rename it if you want. Obviously you can just double click in here and go head. And that just makes it so you see it's changed the color as well there. So with that head, I want to see that at a much lower polygon count. So we come down here, come down to, with the, with the head selected, we'll go to modifiers and then add a modifier. And we're, we're looking for this one, decimate. So we click on decimate. And now we've got, what you can see there is uh, the main one we want to look at is this one here, the ratio. So it's just saying one. So that means that it's one to one, which means it hasn't been a, it hasn't been used at all yet. It hasn't been um, called as a function. Now, if we've got that polygon count and we know that it's it's ridiculous, we know we need a low number. So let's just put a low number in. Um, we'll put a like a very small number in first. Um, we'll put zero point zero five. Um, we'll hit enter. Now what that will do is that's that's now already calculating. So it's going to work out, and you can see the little um, blue spinning wheel showing you what's happening. So it's literally analyzing all of these vertices inside this, this individual model. And it's going to try and emulate the same shape that it is now. So it's going to replicate the shape by keeping these points, these corner points, and these faces that are quite flat. So it knows you know where there's a plane. And it's going to try and keep those, and then it's going to try and generate the sh the, the, the shape um, with a with a lot lower polygons. So we'll let it calculate, and then we'll have a look. So which is done now. And remember that's at zero point zero five. So this is hugely lower. And then we'll put wireframe back on, and straight away we can see an improvement. So on the top, it's given us just a couple of triangles where there's a big flat area in here. Now what we could do is we could go even lower or we could say that, well, that'll do for now. Um, it's given us a fairly um, low polygon model, but we're not gonna change that. So all we have to do is come up here and hit apply and that makes it a permanent thing. So that instantly has helped. Now what you can do as an initial start is just go through the whole model and do that. For example, just take this one, do the same thing, come over to add modifier, we want to decimate and then we'll bring it to, we were happy with that number, 0 0.05. Let it calculate. And because this one has got a lot of um, little marks in the surface, so you can see there, these are even brush marks. It's actually calculating those little score marks in the surface. So that's making it even harder. So it's not done as good of a job there. Um, the geometry is really nasty when you do it this way, but what this is useful for, I usually find is just to bring down the, the level of the model in its initial stage. So it makes it much more user-friendly and makes the system not have to work as hard. So now what I'll do is I'll open up um, a file where this has now been done across the whole model. So let me just go and open file. So once you've worked around the whole model, you're going to have something uh, along the lines of this. So I'll just put the statistics back on. Um, and you can see there with this one, it's a total of, it's still a million triangles, um, 677,000 faces and um, 500,000 uh, vertices. It's got 20 objects um, now in the scene because this one is a slightly later iteration of the model. 
This is the one where we added tracks that we'd forgotten in the uh, in the original video. So now if you look at the individuals, so let's look at the tracks first of all, because that's a good example of what it should look like. Put the wireframe back on, and you can see there that the tracks are super low poly. They came straight out of Nomad like that because they were modeled as, a, as cubes. That's pretty much what I'd want to see in here. And look at the wheels, they, they look okay with the wireframe off, but they're a horrible mess of geometry. But it is a way to get through, you, you know, to get by. This will just bring down that poly count, polygon count. So don't, you know, don't, don't not, don't worry about the fact that it looks rubbish like that. That that's the kind of thing we would probably normally make in in one of these kind of packages, Blender, rather than making it in Nomad. But if all you've got is Nomad and and Blender, and you're starting off, then then this is just a great way to bring that polygon count down. You can see the body's quite low now, the head's quite low, and the overall, we you know, we, we would probably merge these two together as I have done there. Um, so this this is a way just to get you through having those ridiculous polygon uh, counts at, at the start. And later on, we start looking at retopology and um, certainly making topology good for animation. But just to prove the point, if you hold Z and just go to rendered, um, I mean, this is that model just in what's called Blender EV, which is set here. This is the render engine. Um, and it just shows, I'll turn the wireframe off uh, like so. And up here you can switch to animation. So all I did here was I just, I didn't even rig this. It's simply just the, the, the individual parts of the robot are thrown into what's called parenting. And then I just I just ran some basic animation around it, so it just shows that you, you know we we can use that geometry from Nomad without too much trouble. It's not ideal. It's a good start, as in it just shows that you can you can do something with that geometry when it comes out of the iPad. Um, and obviously Blender's free, so this is a simple way to to either a learn this stuff or just try and mess with your model but we would do it in, in a much better way and, and, and in the next few videos we'll start looking at things like retopology and how to do this correctly for an animation pipeline or something like that but as I keep reiterating this will just reduce your polygon count of whatever model you you want that to, to, to be done on I hope you're enjoying these videos. We try to do at least two a week on either VR or um, things like Nomad and Forger app for the iPad. We've been doing them for over six months now and we've got nearly a hundred videos so I'm quite excited to, to get to that 100th video. Uh, please uh, like the video, give it a thumbs up and that helps us get in front of other artists and if you're enjoying the channel overall then don't forget to hit that subscribe button that does help us as a channel and hit all so we can let you know when our next video is about to land.